Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 387, featuring a look at the game Grimoire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar. Now this is the baby of Cleve Blakemore, and it's taken him 10 years to get this, day, uh, get this game uh, complete and up on Steam and GOG and all the rest of the sites. Uh, for what it's worth, I think it's a wonderful game, and I'm really excited to be sharing it with you. Uh, here today. Now if you want to pick up the game, uh, you can get it from Steam, but I actually recommend that you get it from GOG. That's goodoldgames.com, and I'll put a special link in the show notes so that if you buy it using uh, that link, uh, the show will get a little support at no additional cost to you. So uh, please consider that uh, if you want to get the game. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Grimoire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar. And here we go, folks, with Golden Era Games, as good as you remember, except better. Incline. <laughs> What's up with that baby? <laughs> Do I even want to know? I'm guessing probably not. It is Grimoire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar. Adventure for one to eight players. Now that, that would be fun. <laughs> Have eight people gathered around your computer trying to help you play this. That would be an experience. Uh, that would be an adventure. <laughs> I'll just be playing this by myself. Love that artwork, though. I mean, that, that really sets the tone, that graph paper and the pencil, the little miniatures. Because uh, for me, this game really harkens back to those, oh, sort of early to mid-90s role-playing games. So the sort of games you'd play on a DOS, 386, 486 machine, or maybe an Amiga computer, Atari ST. Kind of reminds me of those games. A Dungeon Master... Eye of the Beholder, and some of the later wizardries, uh, heck, Lands of Lore. I mean, you know the era. And my guess is if you don't, and <laughs> you're somehow uh, watching this uh, episode of this channel for the first time or something, I have no idea what any of those games are I just mentioned. My guess is you won't like this Rimwire game, and you'll be sort of clueless as to what all the fuss is about. Uh, but for me, this game was like going to a music store <laughs> probably kind of dating myself there as well but but if, you, if you're old enough to remember that experience of going to looking for your favorite band and every now and then you know this was pre-internet and all that jazz right but, you know just every now and then you'd be in a music store and you'd find an album from your favorite band that you didn't even know existed and then you would get home, and you'd be so excited to get home and put this in your <laughs> your Walkman. <laughs> uh, you know, put the tape in there and just experience something that was, on the one hand, old, uh, but on the other hand, brand new to you, right? And that was just an awesome experience whenever that happened. It's kind of rare, I guess, that anything like that happens today. Uh, but this game, for me, would be like, hey, I didn't know there was a, you know, wizardry... <laughs> X, <laughs> or wow, this I totally missed missed this this Bardstale game. Didn't even know it was out there. You know, if you could imagine an experience like that, I think you'll understand what the excitement is over this. It is kind of like one of those bands that you know they they've been together, or they've been uh, they split up a long time ago, but there was all this sort of material lying around, or these old recordings, and uh, somehow or another it gets released as a, you know, unheard material. Uh, that, that's that, that's sort of what this game, if you're catching my vibe here, that's what this game <laughs> uh, game does for me. All right, so we, we're starting off here, and I'll I'll show you some of the later game after this, but I just wanted to show you some of the, uh, you know, maybe the first 20 minutes or so. Now, I've created a party, and it's, there's quite a few classes to choose from, quite a few races, lots and lots of stats and skills. I mean... The, you know, there's enough here to keep you busy if you're like me and you love digging into, you know, playing around with numbers and, and stats. Uh, as far as I know, he's, uh, Cleve's still working on the manual for this. There's a bunch of guides and forums, discussions about all of the stuff with this game. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure how reliable it is. Uh, I, I found several sites that just seem to contradict each other. 
Uh, some people claiming that some of this stuff isn't even implemented yet. <laughs> you know, that again harkens back. I mean, don't you remember sometimes in those games you'd have a skill that you never used? <laughs> uh, like Wasteland, hello? Uh, you know, so maybe Cleve will work some of that in here as well, but, you know, you, you get enough points and skills that it didn't feel to me like it was that big of a deal. You know, you can just kind of spread the points around. Uh, I definitely appreciate the, uh, the scouting and the, uh, what's another one? Lock picking is a good one. I like the, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, uh, assaying. There we go. <laughs> Help you identify items. Uh, so there's a few you'll definitely want to pay attention to, but other stuff, I just, I'm not really sure, for example, why <laughs> some of those are purple <laughs> and some have a little asterisks beside them. Uh, there's a whole item workshop aspect of the game. I, I never could figure the damn thing out. I made a few potions with it, but apparently, you know, you got this metal smith and metallurgy and some way to poison weapons, maybe uh, enchant weapons. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, I still seem to be doing okay without it. And again, it's, it's hard to say uh, how much of this stuff just never got implemented or you might still be working on. Or maybe it's in there and people just haven't figured out how to use it yet. A lot of questions, open questions that I have. But in any event, uh, there's still plenty of game here. <laughs> More than enough game to keep you busy. Uh, one thing I liked about the game was uh, the interface. I just, I've sort of gone through the spells and stuff right now, but... Uh, for me, this was a very intuitive interface. It took a little getting used to, you, you sort of right-clicking on things. Uh, but once you get the hang of this, and it doesn't take long, and the good thing is that, that you can really get these battles, you can really uh, do the battles quickly. You can just uh, set it how you want it, and then just tap your entry key, your mouse button, and just uh, zip right through the battles. And uh, that, to me, is one of those things where, when Cleve at the beginning, he said that this is uh, like you remember, but better, you know, something like that. Uh, that's definitely something that I uh, think is better. Uh, one of the things that always killed me about some of these RPGs from this era, you'd have to wait for the monsters to load, and then the the turns would take so damn long, especially if it showed the animations, you know, these uh, flourishes of spell animations of the monster attacks, and you know, damn it, it would just really just after a while just start to drag the pace down so badly. This would get so tedious and boring. Uh, with this game, uh, you can once you set up your characters to do what you want, you can just you know tap 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 tap, just rip through the battle. On the other hand, uh, you can always stop tapping when you need to issue a command, heal, a, cast a heal spell or something like that. So for me, this just really worked. This is how I wish more, more games were set up. And you also have a choice of how you want to move around. You can move with the mouse if you like. I think you can pretty much control everything with the mouse. And that's uh, great, of course, if you want to have a, a beer in one hand. Which I imagine a lot of you guys would want <laughs> uh, playing this. Uh, but you could also play it with the keyboard. Uh, however you like it, there's a lot of flexibility there. I just kind of use both off and on. I'm not super particular. I'm probably not the most efficient player, but you know, what the heck, it's not a job, right? Okay, I'm setting up my combat. This is a new party I created to show you the, uh, the introductory content. And uh, for this one, I added a couple of new characters to me. I added a, uh, a cleric and a bard. My other party, I just had a, just the regular fighters and wizards. So I'm curious how this bard is going to work out. Some of the guides I looked at said that the this creature with the eyeball and the bard are really useful to have in a starting party because they have good crowd control abilities. And you do tend to run into packs of things often enough to where that would be handy. Unfortunately, it looks like they're uh, getting their saving throws. And this, this is something I had, I struggled with. You know, I've played this game about 20-something hours so far. And... Uh, a lot of my magic spells, even when I crank them up all the way, and every spell that you have in this game, you, you can decide how much uh, spell points you want to invest in it. 
But it seemed like it was uh, hardly ever happened that it actually did, you know, it hit the, hit the mob. And about half the time it would either fizzle or sometimes even backfire. And uh, <laughs> it seemed like when the spell backfired, it, it always managed to hit my guys, of course. <laughs> so it's uh, magic is definitely one of those things you, you have to be careful with. It, it is kind of like playing with fire, I suppose. It feels like you can just as easily hurt yourself as you can the mob. Uh, so that's, that's probably where those skills kick in, the sorcery skill and, and all that. Some of these races have some pretty cool abilities. Uh, they can have special powers, like the eyeball guy there. Uh, or they can have, uh, like my lions. Lion characters, they can just use their claws and teeth to fight with. Sort of have their own weapons included, which is pretty cool. Like I said, I'm not that far into the game. I think I'm probably about uh, halfway to three quarters, as far as I can tell. And I haven't, I still haven't really found that many items. You know, I still got several empty slots on my characters. Uh, so that actually could be more important than you might think. You know, it's definitely not one of those games where you're going to be finding uh, great armor and weapons after every battle. It's more like one of those games when you finally find a, a decent weapon, you're going to be so happy. <laughs> it's going to really feel like a reward instead of just uh, sort of the default mode. Most of the stuff you find is just junk. Which, uh, to me, is just... You know, it might turn some people off if you're used to these uh, showers of loot after every battle. I guess you won't like it, but... Uh, on the other hand, I do think it makes you uh, appreciate the stuff you do find more, so... It's kind of a trade-off there. Now, it looks like I need to identify this liar. If my assay skill was high enough, I could do this without magic, but... Uh, instead, I'm going to have to use a Identify spell, and I don't think this guy has it yet. Uh, let's see, who's... I know I have a character that has it here somewhere. <laughs> Eight characters, you know, it's a, it takes a while to get, uh, you know, to remember what everybody does and uh, the skills they're good at. This guy has it. Identify. So you can see even that Identify spell, I can crank that up. It's going to use more of my magic or mana. But it makes it more likely to work, so I just identified the liar, and I could get a closer look at it there. So it says sleep, power of seven. So that seems like a pretty good uh, harp, or liar, I should say, but I need to probably pump up my music skills some more before it'll actually start working. I also have that auto heal feature, so you, you don't have to go in there, click cure, and click on the, <laughs> the target. You could just click that. Another nice little feature. And then, of course, you can always rest. And the reason you want to rest is not just for healing, but that will restore your vitality. Those are the green bars. And if you get low in the vitality, it will uh, make you miss more. And if it gets all the way empty, you won't even be able to attack. So it pays to rest. And one of the nice things about scouting is that you can find safe places to rest with that, which is pretty cool. But want to rest uh, intentionally just to run into, into random encounters <laughs> so you you can grind a little bit that way build up your party so here I have little Rosie and you'll come across several of these NPCs throughout the game and, and several of them you can add to your party you can recruit them if you do that you can uh, swap out one of your party members I, I never did this but uh, apparently you can pick up the party member later or wait for you somewhere. I think uh, Cleve kind of had in mind, too. You know, the way the characters die so much. <laughs> uh, you might decide that you just have a really crappy character that you created. You could just uh, let them die, right? And recruit an NPC to replace them. Uh, again, not really the way I like to play. I kind of get attached to my characters. But if you wanted to do that, certainly an option. And I, I should say, too, the uh, NPCs had this conversation system kind of like one of the Ultima games where you're trying to find the keywords to use with them. I mean, it's not the most sophisticated parser in the world, but I mean, who cares? And I believe you can pump up uh, there's, there's some of the skills. I know diplomacy for sure. There might be some other ones that'll help you to identify keywords maybe or get different responses. You can also cast a charm spell. I mean, there's just a lot of uh, different ways to go about this. Let's just see what this does. So, let's see, remove who from party. 
So you see, you have obviously have to uh, cut out one of my guys. She can't be dismissed. It looks like you can't swap them out for somebody, or the person that's trying to recruit her can't be swapped out. Maybe now, I don't know. Let's just uh, get out of this <laughs> discourse. <laughs> Yeah, bye bye. So she did get some pretty good tips though. And there is a journal system in the game. So if you want to go back and read the dialogue again, it records all that for you. Pretty nice. Now I'm fighting with uh, the little shop of horrors. What's the name of that plan in that? I can't even remember. Feed me! Let's see. Clawing, I'm bashing. So you see a lot of no penetration. I think that has to do with, uh, again, the skill level and probably the, the type of monster. They all have their resistances as well, their vulnerabilities. There's his ability. Gazes. So I guess this plant, this plant might not even have enough of, of a brain to be affected by a hypnosis or anything. So you want to adapt your spells and your abilities to the monster type in question. Pretty uh, common stuff for games of this type. Also, I love the music in this. It's sort of MIDI style, I guess you'd call that. And again, very early 90-ish. Back before they were just using all the... Just having orchestras come in and record them. <laughs> I always just thought it was so much better to have the, this kind of music. You know, I want a game to sound like a game. I don't want it to sound like a movie. Uh, but again, that's just probably my prejudice is showing through. So I think you're kind of getting the hang of this. Uh, I want to, when I kill off this uh, plan, I want to take it down to the first dungeon. There's actually some dungeons right off the bat you can explore, which is pretty neat. Uh, but I think that's, oh, what, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, some of these uh, creatures, they have these spells and abilities they cast on you. And the, the problem with that is, they always seem to target your weakest characters in the back. So these wizards might just have a few hit points, and it doesn't take much to kill them. So that's uh, one of the reasons why you see me saving, saving, saving. Something else that we did back in the day, uh, a lot of the new games, of course, have all those saves, and a lot of hand-holding that goes on. <laughs> I think this game is much more of the... Uh, you know, doesn't suffer fools gladly, or maybe even rewards people that are a little bit obsessive about saving and a little paranoid. And there might be some spoilers here. You know, it's it's just the first dungeon. I don't think it's going to be a big deal for you. But uh, if you are uh, one of those types that just wants a totally fresh experience, and you really shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to give any major stuff away. So what I've done there, I've activated the spell called Detect Secrets, and that's the eyeball on the upper left. And then I have a, just a, a basic uh, illumination spell going, Biophosphorescence, I believe it's called. Uh, what those do is it gives me some clues as to secret entrances. And I'm not really sure if there's any benefit to the light spell or not, other than just uh, aesthetics, but it does kind of help a little bit. So what you want to do, get in the habit of doing, is just going all the way around, make sure you cover every block on the map, uh, because uh, there could be secret panels everywhere, or anywhere, and if you can rub up against it with that detect secret spell going, it'll flare up and let you know, hey, there's, there's something there. Could be a, a fake wall, or could be a little panel, a little button you're supposed to push. So, let's see, there's another one. So there we go. Voila! Now this room here, uh, this is giving a lot of uh, clues, a lot of prophecies, I suppose, whatever you want to call this. And, you know, again, I think this is pretty good game design. Uh, we're going to come across all kinds of information that won't be relevant right now. It's just only gradually, maybe much later, that you'll figure out what all this refers to. Uh, but I actually like this kind of approach because it, it gives you sort of a feel of just how big the game really is and just, just how much there is to explore. Kind of a little taste of what's to come. 
And you see, it's writing everything down in my journal for me. So several times, uh, this journal saved my bacon. I would be off in some dungeon, no idea what I was supposed to do, or what, what password to get past a specter or whatever. And again, back in the day, you just, you're just you screwed. You know, you didn't write down a vital clue somewhere early in the game like this. And, you know, that that's just it for you. Uh, but again, it's better than you remember, because in this one, you can just consult your journal. And chances are the information is there for you. All you have to do is have enough uh, sense to apply it. Yeah, so there's the atlas. So look at that. Just That's really neat. Kind of reminds me of that. You remember the journal from Pool of Radiance? <laughs> Curse of the Azure Bonds. You know, you'd have these cool uh, maps in there of places. And like my, my eyeball guy there. <laughs> What are they called? Amoebans? I don't know. Uh, his vitality got all the way down. You heard him start to snore. So he wasn't just bored with my commentary, although there is that. I'll show you something that's just going to blow your damn mind. All right, check check this out. All right, so I'm looking here at the map. I go to set path. I click somewhere. I go to pathfinder. <laughs> it's got cruise control. <laughs> Oh my god, this is amazing. I love that. I could just... Oh, you know, if, if there's one thing about this game that is truly better than you remember, it has to be that little feature right there. Cruise control. You know, I can't tell you how many of these games, even like real recent ones, you, you get way down in the bottom of some dungeon. And... You know, if you're like me and you have some pretty severe directile dysfunction, it can just be uh, agony trying to find your way back, right? You know, I don't know why. This, I, don't, I think this is the first game I've seen with a feature like this, but... Yeah, as long as you've explored it once, you can just click on the, uh, the Pathfinder and bada-boom, bada-bing. I guess you could run into some random encounters along the way, but... Holy cow, what a great what a great feature that is. A lot better too. One of the things that trends in modern games that bugs me is this instant travel or whatever they call it. it to me it just kind of takes all sense away of the actual distance you've traveled. And I don't know, it just kind of des destroys the immersion somehow. Uh, I much prefer this, uh, this way to do it. You still kind of have that tension that you might run into a random encounter, you still have a good sense of how far it is you're going. But it's you don't have to go through the tedium. So it's, it's just another really good game design. Or really a good design decision, the, the way he set it up here. And you notice that, again, so many things you find, your assaying skill won't be high enough to identify it, so you'll need to use some magic. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> don't have a lot of... Uh, magic points to work with. Uh, later on, of course, you can put identify on a couple of different characters or find some books you can scribe it in. So you can kind of distribute it that way. But yeah, I just got tons of stuff here with no way to know what it does until I can properly identify it. So yeah, that's just... Yeah, there's even some, uh, some meat. So when I first saw... <laughs> first time I saw this uh, meat... And my first thought was, oh, God, we're back to Dungeon Master and the, the need to be eating and drinking all the time. It just seems to be more... <laughs> yeah! Oh, I knew Cleve wouldn't let me down. Knew he wouldn't let me down. <laughs> Hell no, these aren't squirrels. You idiots! Oh, man. You know, this, this, my only complaint is I should have run into some rats a little earlier, but it was kind of delayed gratification. <laughs> oh, look, these are good looking rats. Look at them all just, just, just flexing and, oh, I got to give these guys, I want to go full, uh, full on here. We're using spells on them. Hell yeah, we're, yeah, look at those guys. Yeah, come on, come on. Oh yeah, I got it right in the head with a claw. <laughs> Let's bash it. Bash that rat! Oh, 
No penetration. It's like sex! Penetration. Smash him! No penetration. Ah! Oh, we get an extra attack. Here we go. Got him! What the? Uh, I don't want to put him to sleep. <laughs> well. Uh, that bard's pretty much useless at this point. Huh? Uh, squirrels. Missing, 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 missing. Missing. <laughs> Biting. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. My other my other party, I got a guy with a whip. And that's really effective on a rat, man. You just want to <coughs> just whip those bastards. Oh, they're still here, man. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. What the? Well, wouldn't this be ironic if uh, Matt Barton got defeated by his first <laughs> encounter with some rats? <laughs> oh, God, I think I'd be ready to, to give up. Give up on life. I mean, that, that would be that would be too much. All right, come on, come on. <laughs> Scotty, you're right in the head, you... Man, I'm loving this lion. Ah, oh, I got him. 30 experience points, 9 gold. See, these were... <laughs> these rats are carrying some gold with them. That's that's pretty cool. Man, as if I... You know, I haven't said enough nice things. I gotta start pointing out some negatives, I guess. But Yeah, I just like the fact that you just... You find damn gold. You know, it just it adds up in a nice pile. You don't have to worry about this hundreds of junky items everywhere, and all this inventory management. Uh, a little later in the game, you do get you collect enough junk where it starts to get kind of annoying. But uh, for the most part, I guess you could always sell off the stuff. And, uh, <sighs> Man, oh, that was almost too easy, guys. Come on. I kind of lost my train of thought. I get too excited about these rats, I tell you. <laughs> you probably don't want your wife to hear you uh, yelling out, uh, Penetrate! Penetrate! God damn it! Penetrate that damn rat! <laughs> oh, anyway. Looking at the Shrine of the Raptor. It's a pretty good looking uh, tile set here, too. Very Dungeon Master-ish. Uh, and you know, one of the reasons I love those Grimrock games so much, too, is, I, to me, one of the most fun things is going in, into a dungeon like this and finding secret crap everywhere, secret panels, uh, hidden areas. You know, that, that is just so much more fun to me. You know, you can keep all the uh, crummy exposition, all the <laughs> self-indulgent twaddle you get in so many of these games, just walls of text you're supposed to sit... I mean, who gives a damn about characters and politics of factions i don't give a damn i just put me in a dungeon with lots of secret panels and some goddamn rats and just back away <laughs> go away game designer i don't want you here i want to kill some rats so anyway thank you <laughs> cleave you know cleave you can say what you want to about the guy but man, he, he knows how to butt out of his own game and, and just let you have a good time. And believe it or not, that to me is just such a rare quality these days. I mean, I don't want every few minutes to be reminded of, of who was making the game. Hey, look at how brilliant I am with this powerful, meaningful moment. Oh, your choices matter. Like, yeah, my choices matter. I choose to play this instead of that <laughs> crappy game. <laughs> oh, man, that'd be a little harsh. I don't know what it is about. Something about this game, it reminds me of just how crappy so many other games have become, right? I mean, you don't need all that stuff. You just don't need it. It just gets in the way. I mean, it's, it's just kind of an... You know, an epiphany for me playing this. And you just think how, in so many ways, we were actually were better off back in the day with all, all of that. Wh whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, not to beat a dead rat, but <laughs> just know what you do well and do it. Don't try to do everything. Don't try to uh, be some kind of great writer when... <laughs> Again, <laughs> if you really had the chops, uh, you wouldn't be doing this, buddy. You know, we get enough text here. We, we get the gist. We get the story. 
Uh, really, I would say the, the story here is more about exploring things on your own with your own group of characters. You're doing a lot of the imagining yourself. Which, I prefer it that way. I don't need to have all these characters with big predefined backstories and they're bickering with each other and <laughs> this guy didn't like that you did that. Who gives a damn? <laughs> it's like being around, uh, you know, if you have any friends that have kids and the kids are just little spoiled rotten brats, right? And it's like you're just getting sick at how much his parents are just basically slaves. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't want that. I want to eat chicken nuggets. Uh, I can't eat the, the steak. Yeah, she's allergic to water. That's all these I got enough of that without having to have it in a game. <laughs> for Pete's sake, just let me escape it for a few hours. I don't want to... Whoever thought it would be a good idea to have characters in your party that were fussing... Like a bunch of bratty kids. You know, let's find that idiot and uh, <laughs> take it, rip his pacifier out and beat him over the head with Beat him to death with his own pacifier, I think, is a pretty fit punishment for that moron. Uh, much less the people that copied it. All right, so obviously this is an important place, Shrine of the Raptor. It looks like I'm going to have to come back here maybe. It's almost starting to seem to me like this is an area that I want to come back to at the end of the game, maybe. Because there's all these slots, there's all this stuff. So I'm thinking this is just kind of a setup area for later. But anyway, I think we've gone on enough with these guys. I'm going to shift over now and show you a little bit of the later game. You'll see how much harder it gets. Uh, so this is the point in the game where I'm just getting my, my ass beat. I mean, mercilessly. Very tough encounters. And I don't know if maybe this area is just a little too high level for me. Uh, my character is about 6-ish, 7-ish. Uh, One of my little quirks, not just this game, but pretty much any game, if I have a character that dies, I almost always reload. I just I hate that. I know you can resurrect them, raise the dead. But uh, usually, unless it's just you just can't do it, you know, I'll always uh, reload. Try again until I succeed. Uh, this place, though, it might test my patience, because some of these battles in here are just crazy. It just mirrors that, that the, the tile set here. It's kind of a uh, Gigerish. It looks kind of alien. That probably doesn't bode well for me. Ah, right, here we go. Electro maggots. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but a lot of these creatures, what makes them so bad is that they have these uh, spells or these area effect spells will cast on you and normally you know if you're taking damage it's just your fighters and they have plenty of health but some of those other creatures they can target your mages your thief or whatever's whoever's <laughs> cringing in the back behind all the big guys <laughs> and they'll die so quickly and it's just it's just super annoying and again i always have to reload when that happens that's usually why when it when i level up and you get those the stats you can pump into stuff. I always pump them into constitution. Probably not the best strategy in the long term, but I just uh, want to give them enough health so that they can at least take a, a blow or two before they die. That's it. I'm just trying to go all in here. Give these guys everything I got because more than likely this will be a major fight. Got my rat there. Matt, the rat. <laughs> <laughs> Who else am I going to have be the rat? Come on. Uh, he, he's going to be hiding in the shadows, and that'll give him a chance to use his uh, backstabbing, hopefully. It's also a skill. I think it's called something like takedown or critical move. I got that on the ranger here, Nathan. Let's see. There we go. Just double checking everything. Once you hit battle, you're kind of committed to this plan. Man, I just got tons of items, too. Look at... I never did figure out what the hell these perk keys are good for. Something to do with Indiegogo, but I just... I have no clue what. <laughs> Love that little spoon. And I got all kinds of junk in here. Just looking to see if I got anything that might help with this battle. 
See, this party doesn't have a bard, so I keep finding all these musical instruments that are just useless. It'd probably make the, all the difference in the world at this point. Alright, I think I have about... Yeah, the rest of this stuff. I don't think this would be very, very useful stuff. <clears throat> I think I could actually take some of these items. I'm kind of wondering if this might be what I need to put in those alcoves there in the uh, that first dungeon I was showing you. Another thing I like about this is that it's always targeting certain body parts. And I know there's some skills that affect what body parts they hit if they're going for the most vulnerable area or what. Uh, the little percentages after it, 52%, etc., that's the health of the monster. That confused me at first. I, think, I thought it was talking about, you know, the head was 30% damage. It's actually the whole creature. Yep, there we go. See, discharges current. Now that could, that could go anywhere. I went to Shane. Or, uh, Stig. <laughs> Sorry, Stig. <laughs> Got zapped. Shane hit. No penetration. There it goes again. Man, every time they discharge that current, just, yep, see, right to the mage. Now, see, by this point, I got these guys pumped up enough. So hopefully they have enough, uh, enough hit points to take that. But look, he's already almost halfway down. I'm, I barely even touched these things. Fizzle. Let's do the psionic blast. Oh, see, backfire. Boom, right back at me. Of course, damage is me. Damage is Nathan. Adam. Oh, Adam, they have driven you insane. It was a short trip, wasn't it, buddy? All right, cast an ice balls. Nothing really seemed to, <laughs> to work there. It's kind of annoying that they're in three different groups. That kind of nullifies a lot of my crowd control. Well, maybe I should try blessing somebody. I don't know what to try. I guess I'll go ahead and heal him. Hopefully, he'll be fast enough to heal himself before he gets hit with another charge. I'm a little worried that being insane, he might not be the best healer. He cast the sound mind. Yeah. I don't know. Don't, don't people fight better when they're insane? <laughs> the strength of the insane. <laughs> Oh, let's put that to the test. Uh, you think he's gonna go for the electro maggot? Now come on, Matt. You can, you can hide. Stab him. If you flick, that means you throw your knife. I don't know if you can get it back or not. That's one of the big disappointments I've had so far with this game. Is the, you know, th this is Nathan here. Is supposed to be a ranger, and I. Got him a bow and some arrows. And you go through the arrows so fast. I just haven't found any way to get more arrows. There's some kind of hack you can do where you buy everything out of the store and somehow that refreshes it. But it's pretty lame. It just seemed like he uh, forgot about the whole need for more arrows. <laughs> no way to make them that I can tell. Hopefully that'll be fixed in some future update. Uh, it kind of stinks as I put all these points into archery, thinking that eventually I would find some, you know, some way to replenish my arrows, my quiver. But alas, no, he's stuck with a crummy knife. You know, if it were me, I'd just make it so that you could recover your arrows at the end of the battle. Isn't that what people do? I guess it's, you could lose a couple here and there, but uh, it really just sucks to have a your archery skill pumped up and no arrows to use. Other than that, that's probably my biggest gripe about the game, actually. There's a few other little things. Uh, I wish there was just a manual out. <laughs> or at least some more uh, guides, guidance within the game. Uh, you know, you can smash, thrust, or swing. I, it's never spelled out. What's, what's the difference? So, you know, I assume one of them has a better chance of hitting, but does less damage. Maybe one does more damage. More penetration, who knows, but I could never really figure that out. The only other sort of major problem I have is with the this item workshop. Uh, again, I just I could never figure out anything. I was able to brew some potions with it, but there's all this stuff in there about putting poison on your weapons, and you got this metalsmith that's supposed to be able to make weapons. How the hell do you do that? I have no clue. Uh, maybe it's something that, you know, I'm kind of holding out hope maybe later in the game that's explained. But it's just real murky to me. That, that kind of bugs you. 
Really, the only other thing is that, as you can see there, I got this ton of gold, but it's just precious little you can buy, at least again, that I've been able to find that's of any real value to you. I don't know if he meant to put in more stores or or what was going on there. You can find vending machines. <laughs> they, they take a special currency, though. I mean, that's, these are problems that you see in so many games, though, right? The, the, ooh, look at these things. I always end up with bunches of uh, potions and tons of gold and not enough stuff to spend it on. And I tend to be really conservative, economically, fiscally, uh, fiscally conservative. <laughs> I play these things. <laughs> you just never know. Maybe at some point I have to have 20,000 gold to buy passage to the next island or who knows what. So I'm not just going to blame that entirely on, on the game. Now let's see, this one says it's especially good on plants. I guess we can try that out. I'm kind of a split mind on, on some of this stuff. You know, like with the item workshop or these other uh, the classes that don't seem to do very very well, like the, the blacksmith. You know, I suppose you could have just taken it out not had not had it as an option, right? But on the other hand though, it's I guess it almost kind of makes it more realistic. You know, in real life, yeah, sure, you're going to end up... You could have a party with people whose uh, particular skill set's never really used. <laughs> you know, you could still kind of role-play that out in your mind, however you wanted to. You know, some of the more fun Dungeons & Dragons campaigns you can get into. Or instead of playing the traditional warrior or whatever, you could just be a farmer or a banker. <laughs> you know, just some uh, unusual profession that has no real bearing on the... The adventure, it's per se, but it's it's more fun to role play, you know. So you, you can make a pretty good argument along those lines, I think. All right. It's just a different mindset. So I thought we could wrap it up here. This is the I'm in the Museum of Magic. Well, I won't tell you how to get here. It's kind of a minor spoiler, I think. But uh, anyway, this place is fascinating. Lots of uh, interesting gadgets down here, and it's it's not clear to me at this point. What's a legit and what's just kind of a red herring? <laughs> There's a lot of creative stuff. What is it? Chrono Works <laughs> of Krundergraf. There's quite a bit of uh, humor in the game. It's not to the point of being goofy by any means, but I found some Easter eggs, I guess you could call them, uh, references to Trevor from Wizardry, the Wizardry series, of course, or Robert. It's <laughs> spelled backwards. <laughs> uh, and there's lots of little uh, fun nooks and crannies to explore in this game. There you have it, folks, Grimoire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar. <laughs> really, really fun game, just having a hell of a good time with this. It's uh, certainly not a game for everybody. You know, as I said, if you, if you never really played any of the old DOS era, Amiga era, turn-based or grid-based uh, games, you probably want, you, you know, you might still like it, I don't know. Uh, but my guess is you'll like this a lot more if you are nostalgic for the good old days. Uh, it's got a few rough edges on it. You know, I, I don't know, I wouldn't really expect, expecting perfection, whatever that means. I mean, you, <laughs> even if you do go back to those uh, original games, they certainly had their share of uh, problems. Uh, but this one, to me, definitely holds up. Yeah, I definitely would recommend that. I recommend it heartily to anybody that watches this show, if, if you... Or anything like me, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, hopefully, uh, Cleve uh, Blakemore will stick to it. Maybe add some more to it. Or I know he's uh, working really, really hard on some of the the bugs people have found. You know, that's one of the things. Uh, some of the reviews I I was reading, they just kind of insinuated that the game was crashing all the time, or just bugs everywhere. Uh, I never had the game crash on me. Now, of course, your mileage may vary, but I just kind of got the feeling some of that stuff is just overblown. I don't know what the deal was. Uh, it seems to be perfectly stable, as far as I can tell. Might be a little minor glitches here and there, but nothing that affected my gameplay. Now, overall, I'm just, like I said, really enjoying the game. Definitely recommend it. Love to hear your thoughts on it, if you've been playing, if you have tips... Especially if you know anything about this this item workshop. I'd like to know more about that. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. I definitely encourage you to pick this up. I'll post some links to it in the show notes. 
And you really should probably buy it from goodoldgames.com. Unless you're just addicted to Steam, for whatever reason. There's been some concerns about Steam lately. It's just, they're a little too monopolistic. They've been doing some kind of shady stuff. So you might want to buy it from GOG's, what I recommend anyway. Uh, but wherever you get it, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Man, that's all for this week's episode. Uh, hopefully we'll be back next week. I've got some interviews lining up. We've got uh, uh, Chuck Somerville, and we have, uh, oh golly, who else? <laughs> Uh, a couple other people. Uh, actually, uh, Cleve has agreed to come on the show at some point. Maybe I'll be able to get him. Uh, but anyway, I'm looking uh, for additional guests. Uh, so if you have ideas for people you'd like to see on the show, particularly if you know how to get in touch with them, uh, please let me know. You can all also just contact them and uh, let them know about the show and uh, tell them, you know, you, you guys know the show. If, if it's somebody you think would be good, uh, go ahead, tell them, uh, you know, get in touch with me or, or let me know how to get in touch with them and I'll do what I can to get them on the show. But anyway, thank you for that. Uh, also, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much uh, for your financial support of the show. Remember, uh, the show is completely uh, patron or Atreon supported. Uh, it's just guys like you that keep these uh, episodes in production. There are no ads, no, no sponsors, nothing like that. Uh, if you want to join, uh, just go to that link in the show notes. There's a couple of options. You can go to the Patreon link and uh, a buck a show. Or you can go to mattchat.us and uh, look for some of the options there, PayPal and uh, a couple other things. I don't, the only thing I don't, haven't really figured out how to do yet is the bitcoins and <laughs> the cryptocurrencies and all, all that jazz. But uh, anyway, whatever you do, however you support the show, I really appreciate it. So thank you. All right, so what about the news from the Matt Cave? All right, so quite a bit of news here. Uh, good old Stig wrote in. He's got a game here he wanted to share called uh, BAFL, a.k.a. Breaks Are for Losers. Uh, this is a tribute to old school arcade racing games <laughs> such as Super Sprint or Indie Heat. Challenging solo multiplayer fun for up to eight people. Can we say party game? Coming to PC, Mac, and can you believe it, Linux, <laughs> this fall, and uh, the consoles to follow. This is uh, from an outfit called Udibon, or Udidon, o Udidon? <laughs> anyway, it's an indie studio out of uh, France, Montpellier, uh, France. Uh, Stig also wrote in about this, Arena and Age of Barbarians. Now, you might know this game as Death Sword or Barbarian. I used to play the hell out of this on, the, on our Amiga computer back in the day. Now, this is a remake of it, basically. A lot of ex extra stuff as well. Non-stop action game, completely skill-based. Uh, immerse yourself into an incredible adventure in a world inspired by 80s sword and, swords, sword and sorcery fantasy, a.k.a. Conan. Frantic action, brutal fighting, monsters, romance. <laughs> I guess it was a little romance and, and barbarian. And plenty of heavy metal. And that's uh, from Creon, or Cryon Soft out of Italy. And then uh, Thamer, <laughs> a lot of news. I mean, it's been a couple of weeks, right? Uh, so Thamer wrote in about a couple of things, but this one I wanted to share. Heat Signature. Now, this is a game from the developers of Gunpoint. Uh, you break into spaceships, make terrible mistakes, and then you have to think of a way out. So you take a mission, fly to the target ship, sneak inside, and make clever use of gadgets to distract, ambush, and take out the crew. Pretty uh, nice spin on a pretty familiar concept. Sounds uh, innovative and looks good. And that's from Suspicious Developments based out of Bath in the United Kingdom. And then finally, David Beatty. That's right, our David Beatty. Good guy. Uh, good people. He's uh, been working on this Mega Wars project, I guess, for <laughs> ever since I've known the guy. <laughs> Seemed like it must be, I don't know how many years. But anyway, it's now complete, which means... All the features of the game are functional. It's playable and ready for us to approach the press and the world with a game they love. So, I don't know if you're familiar with the original Mega Wars game from back in the day. A classic game. Uh, this is a totally new interface. Uh, ships, st uh, stations, dry dock, etc. in 3D. 
options for hardcore as well as casual players, and this is the part you really want to listen to. You can play it without having to worry about a subscription for a limited time. So I think he's trying the old, uh, you know, crack dealer strategy. I'll let them try it for free and hopefully hook them, <laughs> and then they'll pay up later. Uh, but anyway, I know he's been working on this really, really hard, so please take a few minutes, go check it out, megawars.net. And I'll, of course, I'll post a link in the show notes to that. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. And as I'm looking for quotes about uh, <laughs> incline, <laughs> Yeah, a little picture with the baby on it just kind of freaked me out a little bit and it kind of stuck in my mind. But, uh, you know, you find a surprising number of really, really good quotes with the word incline in them somewhere. It's kind of a strange. I, I don't know. But anyway, this one was, just seemed entirely appropriate. It's by F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> you probably know him from The Great Gatsby. Uh, anyway, I think this quote is fantastic. It seems so appropriate. It goes something like this. Genius goes around the world in his youth, incessantly apologizing for having large feet. What wonder that later in life it should be inclined to raise those feet too swiftly to fools and boars. I hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next time. It's artificial? Of course it is. Must be expensive. Very. <laughs>